In this tutorial, we're going to talk about threads, which will allow us to have multiple paths of execution going through our code simultaneously. In other words, our program is going to be able to branch off so that the application is going to be doing multiple things at the same time. Now realize that it's not really at the same time. You probably only have one CPU with a few cores in it, but we'll have 10 or more threads going at the same time. So what's going to happen is that the CPU switches between these threads, giving little slices of time to each one. And by cycling through them, it's going to give us the appearance that more than one thing's going on at the same time. So to begin with, let's come up here and create a method called do work. And for now, it's not going to take any parameters. And then on the inside, we can say for int i get 0, as long as i is less than 10, i++. Plus plus. And on the inside, we can do a simple console.write line and say something like do work is running. Now if we were to come down to main, we could call do work explicitly. And if we were to run it, you would see that it's going to print out do work is running 10 times. And this is to be expected. So there's nothing really new going on at this point. You should have seen similar kinds of things in 1301. All right, to create a thread, the first thing that we want to do is say using system.threading. And then we'll come down here to main to create a thread. So I'll say thread t gets a new thread. And at this point, I have to tell it where it needs to start executing independent of what's going on here in main. Now to do this, I'm going to create something called a thread start. So we'll say new thread start, and we'll give it the name of the function that we want it to run. So what's going on here is when we create a new thread, we have to tell it where that thread is going to start, and in this case, it's going to be the do work function. Now right after that, we'll come down here and say t.start, and then I'm going to remove this call to do work. And if we run it, you can see that we get similar kind of behavior. Now realize what's going on under the hood is drastically different. We now have an independent thread that branched off that called the do work function. All right, to show what we're talking about, we'll create a for loop down here in main, and I'll say for int i get 0, i less than 10, i plus plus. And then on the inside of that, we can console.write line, and we'll pass it main is running. Now if I were to run it at this point, you can see that we get this interlacing here. The main thread printed five times, and then do work had enough time on the CPU to print all of its work, and then immediately after that, main started running again. Now if we were to run this a couple of times, you can see that we're getting different kind of output. Main was barely able to run, and then do work was able to run, and then main kicked back in. We run it again, and you can see that we get a different output again. So this is really a good visualization of how the CPU is switching between these different threads. We have both the main thread that's running, and then we have this secondary thread that goes off and does its own thing. Now this isn't typically how we structure code. I'd like to keep things in the context of object-oriented programming, so the first thing that I'm going to do is come up here and remove this static keyword, because we don't need that anymore, and I'll cut this function out of here, and I'll create a public class called threaded worker. And then on the inside of that, I'll go ahead and paste do work, and then on the inside of threaded worker, I'd like to be able to identify which worker this is. So I'm going to create an ID, and I'm also going to declare a variable of type thread. Now because this is a class, I need a constructor, so I'll say public threaded worker, and it'll take in an ID as well. Now on the inside of this, we'll just say this.id gets ID, and again, remember when we say this.id, we're talking about this ID up here, and then when we say ID in this context, we're referring to the parameter that was passed in. Now immediately after this, I'll bring the thread to life. So I'll say t gets a new thread, passing it a new thread start. And again, we're going to call do work. After that, I'll start the thread. And then let's come down here and modify what do work is printing out. So instead of saying do work is running, let's say that thread plus its ID plus is running. And this is going to allow us to identify which thread is the one that's doing the work. After that, we'll come down here, and then we'll say console.write line thread plus id plus is finished. Okay, so this looks good. So then we'll come down here in main, and we'll get rid of this code right here. We'll still keep our loop, but in this case, we're going to create several threaded workers. So I'll say threaded worker tr gets a new threaded worker, and I'll pass it the id of i. So what's going to happen here is that we have 10 threaded workers that are working simultaneously. And you can see here that every time I create a threaded worker, I'm calling the constructor, which starts a thread. 
So if we were going to run this code and then examine the output, you can see that thread 0 gets a little bit of time, then thread 2 gets some time, and it actually finished. And then we return back to thread 0. You can see it kind of shuffles along here. So let's run it one more time. And if we examine the output, you can see that thread 2 starts running, and then thread 0 starts, and then thread 1 starts. And eventually some of them start to finish, and you can see it looks like thread 1 finished first, followed by thread 3. But again, you can see that the output is interlaced, and this actually makes debugging threaded code very difficult. So that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you understand a little bit more about threads. You should now know how to create them and how to structure the code in both object-oriented programming and non-object-oriented programming contexts.